Hello dear friend, you are welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to practically show how to use a multimeter to diagnose a faulty contactor. So straightforward, basically there are three faults that can occur to make this contactor not to work or not to supply power to the load. The first problem is a problem with the coil. When the coil is faulty, it will not be able to energize to attract the contacts to close. All right. Now, a possible fault that can happen in the coil is an open circuit. An open circuit means that a part of the coil is broken. So when there is an open circuit in the coil, the coil will not energize. So then the first thing we can do is to check if the coil is properly working. And now, for us to be able to use the multimeter to do that test, we first have to set the multimeter to continuity. All right, so now the meter is set. Now, what am I looking for? Actually, this setting can help me to check for continuity. It can also help me to check resistance. Okay, this coil is continuous from E1 to E2 but it must have an amount of resistance. Otherwise, it will just serve as a short circuit between live and neutral. When there is a short circuit in the coil, the meter will sound. If there is an open circuit, if the coil is not continuous, the meter will not read. It will remain like this. It means resistance is infinite. But then, if I'm able to read a considerable resistance from the coil, then that means the coil is working. All right, so here, I use A1 here, and then A2. All right, so I have 549 ohms. So that is the resistance of this coil. Now, we can also use this to test. Okay, so 2 kilo ohm. And again, at 2 kilo ohm, if there is a short circuit in the coil, the meter should read 0, 0, 0, or a very low resistance. But if I'm able to read a considerable amount of resistance from the coil, then that tells me it is working. All right, so here, A1 here, and then A2 here. Okay, and I still have 0.549 kilo ohm you can see the kilo ohm sign here at first when it was at this point we had 549 all right but now because we have set it to two kilo ohm the reading will now come in kilo ohms so this one will read 0 0.549 all right so it's either you set it here to test in ohms or you move here to test in kilo ohm. I intentionally have another contactor, but this contactor, the coil is bad. I just want you to have a feel of how your reading will be in case the coil is actually bad. All right, so here black goes to A1, red goes to A2, and you see that there is no sign of any movement. So this is a sign of open circuit. In case there is a short between the terminals, then you see the meter reading like 0 or 0 0.000. The fault that normally occurs here is actually the open circuit. So that is how to use multimeter to test the coil. Now, if you want to be extra sure, then you can bring a different contactor that you are sure is working. And then you compare the readings. This is a different contactor. This is the first one we tested, A2, A1. And we had 0.549 kilo ohm. So with the resistance I'm getting from this coil, I want to be sure that it can actually work like this. So here again, black to A1, red to A2, and then I'm getting something very similar, 0.557. All right, so this reading is very similar to the first one. And so by this reading and comparisons, I am very sure that this contactor is okay. Okay, the next thing we are moving to is the contacts. 
All right, so the coil could be intact, but if there is a problem with any of these pair of contacts, the load will still not work. And that will mean that supply may be available at the input all right, but it may not be able to come out to the load. Now, if you want to make sure that your main contacts are working properly, if you press the contactor or if the contactor closes, L1 should make contact with T1, L2 should make contact with T2, and then L3 should make contact with L3. For the testing of the main contact, again, we are using this setting, this setting to test. And in this case, when the contactor closes, I will expect to hear a sound like the short circuit sound from the meter because when the contactor closes, actually there should be a close contact between the opposite terminals. All right, so before the contactor closes, I don't expect any reading. When the contactor closes, I expect L1 to close to T1, and that is exactly what I have here. Then the next thing, I move to the next terminals. That is L2 and then T2. So before the contactor closes, there shouldn't be any reading. But when the contactor closes, there should be a close contact between L2 and T2. And then the same way for L3, when the contactor closes, there should be continuity between L3 and then T3. Now, the next thing to do is to test the auxiliary contacts. So for the auxiliary contacts, already I have a normally opened contact here, but I don't have a normally closed contact. And so I'll be using this normally opened contact and then this normally closed contact as my auxiliary contact. So with the normally open contact, before the contactor closes, they should be open. But when the contactor closes, these two contacts should close. So here, there is no contact. But when the contactor closes, there should be contact. Then we come to the normally closed contact. The normally closed contact means that before the contactor operates, these two contacts are closed. So when we test, we should hear the continuity sound. Otherwise, there is a problem with this normally closed contact. So here, like this. And then when the contactor closes, this contact should open like this. So friends, this is how to diagnose a contactor to find out what the problem is when your contactor is not working properly. All right, so here, there are some of the faults that will require replacing the whole contactor. And there are some of the faults that will require just replacing a part. For example, one of the parts that can be replaced in the contactor is the coil. In my next video, I'll be talking more about the coil and then how to replace a coil when it goes bad. Thank you very much for watching. And please subscribe if you have not yet done that.